Shares of Reddit, meantime, are soaring on a deal with OpenAI that allows ChatGPT to use their data. OpenAI announced a similar deal with Google earlier this year, and it likely won't be the last, as access to large amounts of data to train these systems will be key to winning the AI race. For more, let's talk to someone who knows a lot about it. Scott Zoldi is the chief analytics officer at FICO. He's responsible for AI and analytic innovation across all of their products. FICO, Scott, is not a name we normally talk about in the AI context. Welcome. Thank you very much, Kelly. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Can you explain to me a little bit about what role FICO is playing here? Yeah, so FICO is an analytics software company, and, and many people don't see FICO as that. Um, we have a 30-year pedigree of uh, applications of AI, machine learning, into making decisions that, that impact people. Um, and so from that perspective, many of our customers, whether it be financial services, telecommunications, transportation, um, utilities rely on uh, the AI and, and machine learning that we develop to make really critical decisions that impact their businesses. Oh, interesting. So you guys are developing AI systems. What what kind? I mean, are these aimed to be competitors with the big ones we always talk about? Or, or do these use them uh, to kind of create in-house options? How does it work? So we, we are focused uh, primarily around the applications of responsible AI. Uh, and so what this means are technologies such as neural network technologies that focus on the, the data assets that these companies have to provide interpretable, um, explainable, ethical, and auditable sort of uh, decisions that they can make with, with respect to these models. So they're different than what we would know as a large language model because they are kind of known as smaller models but they're required because we need to make sure that the decisions that we make can be auditable and are interpretable and are ethical. Um, that's not to say that we don't use the large language models um, in, in experimenting with them like many are in the industry today and trying to find the right ways to use those responsibly. So, so one more question on this, where do they pull from? And, and what I find so interesting and, and potentially transformative about this open AI deal with Reddit is that Reddit has all of these forums. Reddit right now is currently one of the top Google answers when you're trying to figure out how to do something. If they can now, it's a great deal for Reddit if they can make a lot of money licensing that sort of knowledge to a platform like OpenAI to train it to give better answers. I mean, it makes complete sense um, on both ends of that game. I'm just curious, how, did you, how do your AI language models populate? What do they draw from? What do they learn from? What are the inputs? So, so many of our types of models that we'll develop are going to be focused on uh, a company's internal documentation to yeah. make uh, organizations more efficient. Uh, it may look at, let's say, your transaction history and to help provide some indication why maybe uh, a, a transaction was stopped for financial crime. And so uh, the, the uses of these uh, models uh, in terms of what we would call small language model are primarily going to be smaller data sets, very task specific so that, that the information is, is relevant uh, when we try to explain a decision or, or to in, inform that consumer how they can change their behavior to make a, a, a better decision in the future. Yeah, in some ways, the corporation is a much better use case for a small language model because it owns all of its data, I imagine, and so in all of its language and can then use it to train systems to give appropriate answers. I think it'd be much harder to solve that potentially for just a, a broadly used kind of search and, and a question and answer engine. And the biggest risk to the AI innovations we've seen is that all the inputs start pulling back and suing them and saying, you know, we want to be compensated for you to use our data. Do you think today's announcement means that they're basically going to have to end up paying up for access to a lot of these answers, so to speak? And if so, does that change the attractiveness of, for instance, investing in an open AI or an Anthropic or some of the big tech platforms building up these models? So, you know, I, I think for each organization that wants to use large language models or small language models, understanding and having some control over the data that's being used to train those models and to be able to talk about that is, is a fundamental part of using the technologies responsibly. Um, and so, you know, for certain types of decisions, that's less critical. Um, for many of the decisions that FICO's clients make, they, they need to have that level of, of comfort. And so, you know, that, that inability to, let's say, have control of that data or to understand exactly what was used in training that model or how it was trained um, will, be, will cause some, some pause. And that's why we even see, you know, regulation talking about concepts such as high-risk AI applications and, and companies making decisions where they will apply generative AI and will they, where they will not. Uh, I think the main sort of focus is, is that generative AI has come on like, like a bull, right? Um, and it's great and it's interesting um, technology, 
but not every problem is a generative AI problem. And so most organizations are looking to what are those unique spaces in their business, like making their uh, employees more productive um, and applying it there where they can do so responsibly. That's great because getting them more productive is exactly what we were just talking about, getting the whole economy that way. Which large language model would you bet on? Uh, that's an interesting one. I, I'm a fan of, of a lot of the, the open source technologies. Um, with that said, I, I think you know a lot of the work that OpenAI is doing today, driving um, uh, the forefront of, of some of these technologies, is, is, is something that we're definitely paying attention to. Um, but that's where kind of my interests are, in addition to then doing fundamental research on how to uh, apply the techniques um, privately too. Yeah, I'm very excited to see what that means, you know, kind of in real time for, for a lot of us going forward. Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate your time.